Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to be taking a look at the Ioneal Retro Mini PC. I'll leave the specs up on screen now, but special thanks to Ioneal for sending this device for review. As usual, they have no input in what I say and they haven't seen this video ahead of time. The model that I have here is the 3200U version, and it has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage, and it retails for 220 US dollars as of right now on the Indiegogo page, which I'll leave a link in the description to where you can order it. There's also the 5700U version, which the same configuration retails for 299 US dollars. Some might say that's the better option if you're going to be looking at this at all. I would be part of that group. In the box, there's a user manual, instruction manual for the INEO Space software, which we'll talk about, and some stickers. Then we have the actual mini PC, which has a nice retro vibe. There's the power button right on the top, vents on the side and back. And you can see the ethernet port, USB ports, display and HDMI port, and power here as well. On the front, we have a USB-C port and a headphone jack. On the bottom, there's holes for mounting, but they aren't VESA mount holes, so just keep that in mind. Overall, this design doesn't really do anything for me specifically, I just nothing that I really care about, but I think for a lot of people they might actually like this design. A lot of the mini PC companies are going for wacky, crazy, those kind of designs, and it's nice to see something that's a little bit more old school and retro. So on the fence, if it's something that you care about or don't care about, but they did something cool here, so at least that's something. Continuing into the box, and we have the power adapter, which is massive, then the plug adapters, depending on where you live, and they all just snap on. Then we have some more accessories like SATA cables, screws, drive caddy, replacement power buttons, screwdriver set with picks, and an HDMI cable. Honestly, I'm actually pretty impressed with everything that it comes with. And it's good to see that you're covered for every base that you need. So first thing we're gonna do is open up the retro mini PC and just do a teardown. And this is where things start to go downhill. Going by their instruction manual, which shows how to do the teardown, remove the four screws at the top, and that's easy. Then use their flimsy little pick to try and shimmy the case off. It took me some effort and I broke one of the picks doing it, but eventually it'll come off. Once inside, we're greeted by the CPU fan and the rest of the internals. It seems like if you wanted to add extra storage, you literally have to take out the entire board and everything, which is actually the opposite of my experience with some other mini PCs. So I started to remove the fan, which is three screws and then unplugging the actual fan from the board. Underneath that is the heatsink, and you can now see the rest of the board. The fun part is next. This is where you need to remove four screws, except in the manual it shows three. I spent a lot of fun time just staring at this, not seeing the fourth screw for a good half an hour at least. And it turns out that it's underneath the heatsink, and I would basically need to dismantle all of it to get to that screw. It was at this point where I gave up and I said, F that, I'm not gonna be doing this. So my entire recommendation is don't take it apart and don't think you can add storage to it. Just assume that how it comes is basically how it's going to be. This was strike one. So now I decided to put it all together and I ran into another issue where I couldn't reattach the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth cables. They just wouldn't snap back in. And that took me a long time. So let's fast forward this entire teardown that just angered me. So jumping into the setup and the setup of this mini PC is basically the same as any other Windows device. So not much to talk about here, just go through the normal Windows install. The fun begins when you're done all of that and Ioneo Space starts up, which is immediately after. You don't even see the desktop. In this build, the build that ships with the actual device, it assumes you're using a controller and it shows controller inputs. You don't even see your mouse cursor. And that's fun. I ended up figuring out that enter is A, 
So I continued on thinking, whatever, I can make do and I'll just go through pushing enter. Then the installation froze on the finishing the final work section. So I rebooted and I tried again. This time it took 10 or 15 minutes and it actually worked. But now we're on the Ioneo space screen and this is where my mouse doesn't show up again. So I can only tab through with my keyboard. So I closed it and by closed it, I mean, I went to task manager and end task, got out, went back in and I was greeted by an update notification. So we're getting somewhere, except this time it wants controller inputs. And this time, not a single button on my keyboard would work or my mouse. I literally couldn't select upgrade with anything that I had. So I did what it wanted. I connected my Xbox controller through Bluetooth to the mini PC, and I was finally able to just click upgrade with it. And then it froze again. This is strike two and Joey's getting angry now. So I rebooted once again, clicked upgrade, and this time it immediately worked. I and Eospace updated, rebooted, and now my mouse and keyboard all work in the actual program and everything is fine. Hooray. So the first thing I did was jump into settings to see what this does that caused me all of this pain. First thing I noticed was in the performance tab, we aren't using the full 35 watts. So I enabled that since it's a desktop PC that's always connected to power. Then I enabled the performance overlay since I want you all to see just how great this is at games. Look through all of the other settings, but nothing that I really wanted to change or needed to change. So I just disabled IS space from running at startup. Then I headed to AMD Adrenaline and I updated the graphics drivers, did all of the Windows updates and all of that fun stuff. So I got us all ready to get started playing some games. And just before that, let's start with the Geekbench 6 test. And I'm gonna do the CPU first. And we ended up with a massive 745 for single core and a massive 1986 for multi-core. For those keeping track of my sarcasm, that was sarcasm. These are pretty low numbers and it kind of scared me for game performance. Running the GPU benchmark next and we have a 3994, which once again is pretty low. Moral of the story, let's not expect great things from this and you'll see that in a second. First up, in my infinite wisdom of thinking that this might be better than I thought, we have Triangle Strategy, which ran at a beautiful sub 15 FPS. But no problem, that's a newer game, so let's see something from five years ago instead. And I jumped into Yakuza 0, and that ran at a nice sub 30 FPS. So I'm starting to see that maybe these might be too tough for this mini PC. Octopath Traveler 2 proved that point once again by being sub 15 FPS. And that didn't surprise me, but I'm trying to pick games that I actually play. So next up, I tried Tales of Arise, and it couldn't play the actual cinematic. So yeah, I'm being a bit too hard on this thing with my choices. So let's go all the way to the other side, and here's Slay the Spire, which runs at full speed. Because if it didn't, I would have ended the video here. It's an indie card game, so it just has to. Same thing here with Moonlighter, and I'm starting to see a pattern that maybe this is just an indie mini PC. And that sounds alright, I could see a use case for an indie PC. But again, maybe, just maybe, it can do a bit more. And Dragon Quest XI shattered those hopes. So let's just stick to indies, yeah? And then again, my hopes and dreams were shattered when Dave the Diver didn't run at full speed. So I guess we need a certain kind of indie, which is now just confusing. And yes, I know that Dave the Diver isn't technically an indie, but you know what I mean. So I decided to go further back and I booted up Danganronpa Traeger Happy Havoc. And that seems to run just fine, at least for the visual novel parts. It might struggle for the classroom parts but that wouldn't surprise me. So I got a little bit cocky again, and I decided to run Hades, figuring that Hades is an indie game basically, and it should just run. And that had some big dips occasionally into the 40s, but it mostly did run at 60. 
So it's not perfect and it's not terrible, but it's still a little bit disappointing. And if I'm going to be testing Hades, then I need to test Dead Cells. And thankfully that at least ran at full speed. Although it did feel a little bit off for some reason, but let's just say it ran perfectly. Then lastly, I decided to end it off with a game that I was really hoping would run, and that's Persona 4 Golden. And with a 60 FPS cap, it was running at 30 most of the time, which is just unfortunate. Yo. Feeling a little bit dejected here, so let's try emulation. So what I did was install Emudeck, just to make things easy, and thought I would start off with some Mario Tennis. It has to at least run all of Nintendo 64, but I had some slowdown in the menu and in game, and it seemed to be fine for the most part. I think if I was really using this, I would drop it down to 720p instead of 1080p, as it seems like it can't handle it completely at 1080p, but thankfully that means that this should play the entire library of Nintendo 64 at at least 720p. Which is nice, but the bar is just low now. So I decided to check out GameCube next, and I used F-Zero GX as my test game. And I had to drop it to native resolution, and it still didn't run at full speed. Which is just disappointing again. I imagine some GameCube games would run fine, but I mean, why bother at this point? Then to leave on a high note, God of War on PS2 at native resolution ran just fine. Setting it to a 2x resolution has it drop off quite a bit from 60 FPS. So I guess you kind of need native here, although I doubt the entire catalog of PS2 would be playable. Honestly, this is just strike three and let's just wrap it up. This is marketed as a gaming PC. Their tagline reads, real gamers, no gamers. So it's safe to assume that you'd want a gaming mini PC to actually play games. And that just doesn't seem to be the case here. So I'm not exactly sure who this might be for or who to recommend this to or why you would purchase this specific model. Maybe, just maybe, the 5700U version might do a little bit better. I have no idea, they didn't send me that one. They sent me the 3200U version. I haven't seen any videos on the 5700U, so I don't know how that performs. But I have to imagine that it can't be as bad as this, and that might be a better option if you're looking at this at all. As far as the 3200U version goes, did the games that I played excite you? Did it give you an idea of what this might be capable of? because then that'll give you an idea on if this is worth it to you at all. But if you want my personal opinion, I got this for free and I still can't think of a use case for it. I don't know what I would do with it. I don't know what if I gave it to somebody what they would do with it. I actually don't know what the use case of this specific model is. And that's kind of unfortunate because this seems like it's fine, there isn't really anything that's a deal breaker besides those software issues, but they're easily overcome. So maybe the 5700U version is the answer and that might be it, so try and watch some videos on that model I guess. I don't want to be overly mean on this, but it's just tough when I just can't think of a use case. I can't think of who would purchase this, in all honesty, like why would you buy this specific model? when it doesn't really do much. So tell me in the comments below if I'm missing anything, if you saw something that excites you, if there's a use case I'm not thinking of, but honestly there's better mini PCs out there that aren't charging a little bit more for this design, that are a bit more powerful in the same price range and all of that, so this doesn't really hit the mark on the budget side either, so I'm just not exactly sure who the 3200U would be for. I know that Dave the Diver and Hades aren't exactly the best benchmarks out there for games, but I mean if it can't play either of those games then I'm not exactly sure what we're doing here. That's all I have for this one. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow, and hope you all have a good one.